Welcome to Amaka Intellectual Factory, where I host podcasts and many other interesting stuff. I have been listening to a lot of Princellas. I can't even call them critics. These people are dark and wicked. I just have to call it as it is. And girls, even as the master military strategist that I am, I am horrified. There is literally a channel devoted to tearing Princella apart. And I suspect that channel was made by a certain dark-skinned black man I have made a video on already that criticizes Princella as if she stole his birthright. But of all of Princella's haters, the ones that are really a major problem for me are the black women hating on Princella. These women are no joke. I have been listening to them and there is absolutely no reason or logic in their condemnation of Princella. Now, wait a minute. Before anyone disagrees with me, I want to quickly add that there are definitely certain things that I feel Princella should have done differently. Nevertheless, it is not enough to come after her the way these people are coming after her. Princella definitely needs an emergency rebrand. So in this video, I will be talking about the lessons I have learned from Princella's haters. Lesson number one, you cannot teach an old dog new tricks. Sisters, you all know I love you, right? But I have to tell it as it is. You cannot teach an old dog new tricks. Princella should focus on reaching younger black girls from toddler years to their 20s. Those older women are still very okay. However, it appears a lot of the black women and even non-black women that were listening to Priscilla were mostly in their 40s and upwards. And these are women that patriarchy has already done serious harm to. A lot of them feel stuck in their situation and are incapable of telling themselves the truth. 
That is why when they speak, you cannot help but be mesmerized by the lack of maturity and logic in their reasoning, despite their age. I was listening to a live podcast where one black woman who said she no longer supports Princella gave no logical reason other than she's a 46-year-old woman who had a crush on 38-year-old Princella and talked about how her attraction to Princella was sexual and how she had dreams and fantasies about Princella and how Princella came to her in her dreams and held her hand and this and that. The whole time I was waiting for her reason for no longer supporting Princella and I got none. This is what I call the spirit of Potiphar's wife. It is also a form of the Jezebel spirit. For the benefit of my viewers, I will tell you who Potiphar was and who his wife was. These two characters feature in the story of Joseph, popularly described as a dreamer in the Bible. After Joseph was sold into slavery by his jealous brothers, Joseph found himself in an Egyptian slave market. According to the Bible, the grace of God upon him was so great that Joseph soon found favor with Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials. A favor so great, Potiphar rose him to be second to him in his business. But what do you know? Potiphar's wife starts to lust after Joseph. After multiple failed attempts to get him to sleep with her, she accuses Joseph of rape. This caused Joseph to lose all the favor he had with Potiphar and landed him in one of the deadliest prisons in Egypt. My point is that it is absolutely crazy that you condemn a person based on your sexual fantasies about that person and your inability to be with that person. I guarantee you that the black women that started gang stalking me when I moved to Los Angeles have this Jezebel spirit as well. So at the end of her talk, other black women in this anti princella echo chamber said Priscilla was using witchcraft and is a pimp. These women were even praising black male misogynists over Priscilla. All these smoke for Priscilla and pointing out how quote and unquote manipulative Priscilla is. But none for the white men that poison your food, water, air and put you on a hamster wheel that burns you out over time. No smoke for white male patriarchy that actively disrupts the social, love and financial lives of black people. No smoke whatsoever. In fact, in this anti princella echo chamber, there was a white man with a sexually suggestive name in this group that was allowed to write all manner of nonsense about Princella. When I questioned this white man's participation in an obvious black women discussion, I was met with a big pushback from a lot of black women in that group. This is what happens when that black female feminine energy has been corrupted. This brings me to lesson number two. Black America is in the middle of a civil war among themselves and the good black Americans have been losing for a very long time. This is scary. There are black Americans that are committed to making sure black America never rises again, never. And I have met some of them. There is a black American saying, all skin folks ain't keen folks. This saying doesn't apply to Africans and black Americans. 
This applies to black Americans. And if you study your black American history, well, more like our black American history, you will see points in our history where so-called blacks from the Caribbean, Appalachia, and the Pacific were introduced into your societies and these black people devastated black America. Even now, I witness black Americans tear other black Americans apart. My heart beats for those lovely black Americans that want the best for black America. Because black America at its prime was such a beauty. Study your history. And I'm not talking about slave history. I'm talking about black American history long before the transatlantic slave trade. As long as there are black American women and girls that genuinely want the best for black America, I would support them and never give up on them based on my bad experiences with those other so-called black Americans who are a problem to decent black Americans. Don't let them deceive you with this so-called diaspora wars. There are no diaspora wars. I love my black American sisters and they love me back. We also have these evil black people in Africa that try to create this fake diaspora wars. And that is because black devils have no nationality. Lesson number three. A bird in hand is better than a dozen in the forest. Princella should focus on the quality of her audience as opposed to the quantity of her audience. The type of mind control that black women have suffered over the years is so severe that anyone who dares to take up the task of mentally liberating black women must study and know the enemies of black women. Because if you know the enemies of black women, you will not allow non-black women in spaces where the issue at hand is the upliftment of black women. Now these non-black women and even men can be business associates. But at every point in time, a black woman's face must always be what other black women look up to. Lesson number four. I think Princella wasted a lot of momentum. And that is because I don't think she is operating from a blueprint. You have to have a blueprint when you take up the task of liberating black women and girls mentally. And how I know she doesn't have a blueprint is that she doesn't even talk about building institutions, infrastructures, facilitating favorable laws, regulations and policies, or even starting an NGO that caters to the well-being of black women and girls. She built all this momentum and didn't build anything with it. She had enough momentum to give talks to toddlers teenagers and young adult black girls but I don't think she did that rather she gave talks to older black women already brutally bruised and traumatized by patriarchy there's no problem with that but your focus should be on younger black women and girls not these older women who are now turning on you lesson number five Princella has to learn to talk to her black female audience gently. I see some improvements since the unfortunate B. Taylor incident. Black American women like to be talked to gently and sweetly. I had to learn to talk to them like this too. They like to be addressed as queens, sweetheart, honey, love, darling. Of course, when appropriate. Use your intellect to know when it is appropriate. 
Priscilla has to also cut down on the cockiness. It is also a concern for these women. You have to pay attention to what they are saying because they are the ones consuming and supporting your content. Lesson number six. Priscilla has to try to maintain a platonic relationship with her audience and those she publicly does business with. I'm not making any allegations, but a lot of these black women against her seem to believe she is sleeping with or has slept with a lot of her close black female associates. This is something Princella has to address, especially if it is not true. One of the ways to not allow this type of crazy allegations to flourish is by having an actual wife. Not even a girlfriend, a wife. Many of them are not too happy with your 23-year-old girlfriend being a 38-year-old woman. Now remember, this is not my concern. As far as this goes, I don't care. However, I have learned to alter my behavior a little around certain people. I'll give you an example and I hope it is a good one. I won't classify myself as an introvert, maybe somewhat reserved, but I am not an extrovert. When I go about my business, I'm so focused on my destination, I typically don't see people and walk straight ahead without saying hi. I've been like this all my life until I found myself in predominantly black American and Hispanic areas. I found that as a good looking light skinned black woman, carrying on like this gave these people the impression that I was a snob or arrogant. So now I say hi to people especially when I pick up their insecurity if I don't say hi. And I have found that it has saved me a great deal of haters. Just yesterday, I got into an elevator and a black woman was in the elevator. I picked up that energy before I stepped into the elevator with her. I made eye contact, smiled at her, and said hi with a pitched voice. As I exited the elevator, I smiled at her again and told her to have a nice day, also with a pitched voice. I'm going to tell you now, this is not my nature. If I were to be me as in me, I would get into the elevator, no eye contact, no smile, no talk. And when it is time to exit, the same. No eye contact, no smile, no talk. But being around black people and Hispanic people in America, especially with all these light skin, dark skin conflict, I have come to put up this act. It has saved me a great deal of drama and witchcraft attack. Because these types of people are usually very petty. Since they know you work in the same building as them, they will look for you and actually try to get you fired on some bull. And woe betide you if these people occupy a top position in the company or building. Some people don't say hi back, but I'm not disturbed by it because the less haters I have, the less witchcraft and disruption I have to deal with. My point is that my life has been a lot better since I started behaving this way. There are still haters, but it has eliminated a good number of other haters. Princella, please care, at least to some degree, what your supporters think. Lesson number seven. Black Americans no longer teach their children about white people and their history with white people. You cannot be for black female liberation 
and not encourage black women to learn and teach their children about white people and their history with white people. This kumbaya with white women Priscilla sometimes talks about is just not gonna work. Lesson number eight, not everyone wants to be saved. Some black women are so knee deep into their trauma that any attempt to save or heal them would cause them to fight back viciously. And this is sad. I have heard Princella talk about this, and it is the truth. A lot of these black women don't want to be saved. And you know what they say about misery? It likes company. So they don't want to be saved, and they don't want others to be saved. Lesson number nine. Black women are starting to deal with each other in a way that we haven't for a very, very long time. So as a result, we are relearning ourselves. This has revealed to us the two predominant female energies that black women possess. The female feminine energy and the female masculine energy. Now I understand how black men seem to know black women more than black women know themselves. Black men have been dealing with black women intimately for a long time. I also understand now when black men speak of black women in a certain way that is so unapplicable to me. They're not talking about me. They're talking about black women that carry a different energy from me. Lesson number 10. Princella, please listen to that damaging B. Taylor video or pay someone to actually listen to it and take notes. That one act by B. Taylor costs you a great deal. You have to study something like that that caused you so much harm. So these are just some of the lessons I have learned so far from listening to Princella's, <laughs> I can't even call them critics. These people are vicious. I can understand certain types of criticisms, but make no mistake about it. You have some really mean people who have no other agenda but to tear down Princella at every given opportunity and they are milking the living daylight out of this B. Taylor issue. I am a bona fide master military strategist. This is because I am an avid reader and researcher and the books and materials I typically preoccupy myself with are literally military strategy books, history books, especially war history books. However, as a new content creator to social media, I am taking notes. I'm a learner. This thing is serious. Well, that's all I have to say for now. Until next time, take care of your lovely selves. And remember, life is beautiful and worth living.
What happened as I left?